Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now in today's video um, normal service will be paused because yesterday at the time of recording was the 25th anniversary of Windows 95 and I have done the square root of nothing for it. I'm obviously still in the middle of academic August. So I thought I would uh, put something together quickly. What you're seeing here is a Windows 3.1 virtual machine running in PCM. And, um, well, it's a virtual machine that I've put together today, and um, I've not really been that kind to it in terms of a good system to upgrade because um, I have set it up with, um, well, I mean, obviously I've got the drivers needed to run, um, I've also put a desktop background on it. Now that is, um, it looks a bit dodgy because it is a 24-bit color image. It's a 24-bit color bitmap and it is um, being displayed on a 256 color display and Windows doesn't know what the hell to do with it. Um, we've got uh, Microsoft Office 4.2. We've got um, network access. We've got... Um, Adobe Acrobat 3.0, which is a, well, it's a good program to have on here because it has both a 16 and a 32-bit version. And obviously, and the installer will install the appropriate version. Um, Microsoft Publisher 2, which has actually been installed from the network. We've got PaintShop Pro and Adobe Photoshop. So a nice wee array of programs. Oh yeah, and CorelDRAW 5. So, got a nice uh, wee selection of programs. So, um, I guess there's no time like the present. Let's um, start the upgrade to Windows 95. Now, it's a good idea to not have anything else running in the background. So, let's um, exit out of um, Acrobat Distiller and the Microsoft Office toolbar. I'm just going to check the task switcher. Nothing too visible running. Oh yeah, there's also the uh, Microsoft IntelliPoint what, version 1.0. Oh, well, we'll leave that going. Um, so, let's uh, run d colon backslash setup.exe. I'm going to install Windows 95. Now, it's going to perform a routine check on the system. Please wait. Please continue to wait. Oh, we're, we're off to a good start. It's it's crashed, is what's happened here. It's, it's, actually, it's actually went and crashed. And I've just accidentally moved the window and, oh dear, I, I shouldn't have uh, done Control-Alt-Delete there. I forgot about that. Um, this is, uh, this is not happy with me. So, let's try that again. Just going to wiggle the mouse pointer about if it crashes. Oh, it's actually um, showing the um, animated um, magnifying glass search in the computer now. Well, would you look at that? See, I, I like how it's got these animated icons because you're at least able to know if... Um... See, now, this is the challenge. I mean, this, this is how a lot of people might have installed Windows 95. They might have used the upgrade uh, CD. And, um... Well, they would have probably wanted to do that, or a floppy diskette set. They would have probably wanted to do that because it would have been cheaper and easier to do an in-place upgrade. Now, those of you who've seen my videos for long enough, you'll know that I really don't like in-place upgrades so much. I really don't like in-place upgrades because I feel that it's a bit messy. You've probably got, you know, an operating system. It's probably got a lot of fluff in it, you know, and discarded files and and what have you. I, I just prefer to back up and start again. Obviously, I, I do understand that 
you know, back in the 90s, you had a lot of documents. Might not have always been possible to just back up to floppy disks. Um, depending on how many documents you had, obviously. I mean, might have been easier if your hard drive was only you know, a couple of hundred megabytes, but... Oh, setup cannot perform the system check. You'll need to quit setup and check your hard disks from MS-DOS. Quit setup, then run scandisk.exe slash all from setup disk 1 or the Windows 95 CD. Then start Windows and run setup slash is to skip the system check. Alright, that's fine. I know. Do uh, you know what? Let's let's run scan disk slash all. No, we're not going to do a surface scan. That's uh, that's a silly idea. All right, let's let's try once again, and here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. It is strongly recommended that you quit all Windows programs before continuing with setup. Use Alt Tab to switch between programs, save your work, and close all other programs. You know what? I'm just going to use the task switcher. And, and it's crashed again. Right, well. <laughs> doing well. We're doing well. How, how, how far are we in? And so far we've... Uh, so far we've still not actually gotten anywhere in terms of installing Windows. I do apologize for the, the screen, the bits of screen uh, that you can see behind this VM. Uh, right. Uh, all right. Okay. Windows setup could not completely install Windows. You need to run setup again and choose safe recovery when prompted. Um, so I'm going to run scan disk again. Just to be sure. Okay, I'm going to exit out of these beforehand. Excellent. So I want to install to this directory. Checking your hard disk pro for problems, checking for installed components. Checking for available disk space. Well, there should be some. Uh, we'll save the recovery files, why not? So what this is doing it's, is it's backing up the original uh, Windows for Workgroups installation. Excellent. So what kind of an install do I want? Analyze 
size of my computer. Uh, this is going to be uh, this is going to be entertaining. This is another point at which setup can fail quite spectacularly. There we go, and now I can choose whether I want to install the Microsoft Network, Microsoft Mail, or Microsoft Fax. Let's just leave those. Excellent. And obviously it can pick up the uh, settings I have for Windows 3.1. I'm guessing I should be able to update um, the network driver to a Windows 95 one. Um, 95 UPG, Whitefield. There we go. Computer description. This is just my name. Um, right, yep. Yeah. ATI Graphics Pro Turbo Mark 64. So it's it's found everything I think that it needs to. Um, the display hardware that and the sound hardware that this is emulating each has drivers for Windows 95 actually on the CD. The network card doesn't. Uh, is it going to use the Windows 3.1 drivers or is it... Uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I mean, you can get Windows 9X to use Windows 3.1 drivers. You can make it, you can kick and scream and make it do it. Doesn't like to, but it is doable. I mean, I was once able to use the Windows 3.1 Super VGA driver on a Windows 98 system, and the James it looked weird. I mean, it, it was it was fine. It displayed everything. It was it was perfectly fine. But, um, you know, and it worked as expected, but obviously the Windows 3.1 256 colored driver, you know, its idea of some of the darker colors versus a standard Windows 98 256 color video driver's idea of the darker colors, well, they're not the same. The darker, two hundred. The darker colors on that color driver are, well, they're a lot brighter. I mean, obviously, if you use a, if you have a display driver, the color palette tends to look a wee bit more normal, as you can probably see now. Well, I mean, obviously, you've seen this. Um, you've obviously seen this um, screen several hundred times over on this channel. Just Windows 95. All the exciting new features. I mean, Windows 95, I mean, you, if you haven't seen it, you, you know, I invite you to go and watch it. My Windows 95 documentary that I made five years ago for the 20th anniversary. But, um, I mean, it was really quite revolutionary, it was Windows 95. What it brought to the table, you know, ver you know compared with other versions. You had plug and play, you had the Explorer interface, you had programs to help you get up and on the internet and what have you. Um, networking was easier. Uh, but I think the big thing was really was plug and play. Obviously, multimedia was touted as being a lot easier in Windows 95. Of course, you had DirectX as well for gaming that was that made things a lot more simple as well all right finishing setup the setup re uh, wizard is ready to start windows 95 and begin the last part of setup uh, remove any discs from their drives and then click finish yep okay obviously there is a real mode cd rom driver as well installed because before this was MS DOS and Windows 3.1 oh and real mode networking as well
All right, here we go. Nice color scheme. Um, so, yeah, that's my username. <laughs> Got network support and setup. This has actually connected the network drives. That's, that's quite something. So now it's converting everything. Oh, Windows 95 includes a new feature called the Start Menu. The Start Menu will be easier for you to use if you reduce the number of program groups you currently have. For more information, see Help after setup is complete. Okay, so now it's time to choose the uh, time zone. So um, the RTM version of Windows 95 would let you select um, which time zone you wanted. Um, so we had, um, so I'm going to choose this one. No, I'm not. I'm going <laughs> to try again. I'm going to choose that one. There we go. This was taken out in, uh, later versions of Windows. Oh, the desktop background. Uh, this was taken out actually in later versions of, uh, Windows 95. Uh, because there was um, obviously uh, politics, you know, there's different time zones, What what's in what time zone, what's in another time zone. It, it's a bit, um, yeah, people got a bit funny about that, so. But there we are, Windows 95 is pretty much installed. Oh, Microsoft mouse not bound. Oh, that's that's quite interesting. Oh, no, nope, it's found it. Now finalizing settings. And there we have it. Got Microsoft Office 4.2 and everything's been set up. I think what I'm probably going to do, <laughs> um, I think what I'm probably going to do is change a color scheme because this, this is blooming awful. So I'll just have the window standard. There we go. Let's see if we can set up. Uh, Let's um let's see if we can update um Microsoft and Telepoint. Oh dear. <laughs> This isn't, oh, no, it's doing it. It's just taking its time.
Ah, there we go. And now it's wanting me to reboot again. Obviously, I've still got the Windows 3.1 sound scheme. Whoops. go we now have um we now have that installed so let's go into the uh, control panel and um i think we should set some settings i'm gonna change that that's a lot better um And I'm going to install the alternative mouse pointers. There we go. We've got windows. We've got black extra large. So we've got um, a lot of program groups. We've still got things like uh, Microsoft Mail and Schedule Plus from Windows 3.1. Uh, we've got uh, the TCP IP32 program group. We really don't need that. Microsoft Office input devices mouse um paint shop pro plug and play i mean really Re really you you don't <laughs> that is just not needed now uh there's real no real way to remove a lot of this stuff though because it didn't come with uninstallers also have a um some dos programs so yep for example i've got word perfect I forget Ooh. i forget uh, what thing it is to bring up the menu but um i know how to use the keyboard more or less to navigate around word perfect so there we go that um that works um whoops ah that's that's not what i want didn't want to register um what i can do though is um open adobe acrobat oh the 16 <laughs> bit version will not run please run the 32 bit version so actually i'm gonna need to update that um while i'm at it i suppose i should check what's in device manager what what is in there pci ethernet controller <laughs> existing ndis2 driver now yeah what do <laughs> how do i deal with this well i could go on using the 16 bit driver but um I think what I would be better doing is um, is 
installing the actual driver for Windows 95. Luckily, I left the Windows 95 CD in there. Oh, and now it's not happy. There's a surprise. <laughs> I wonder if I was supposed to delete the other one first. Oh, I should probably eject that. There no longer seems to be the network card address in DOS, so maybe it's uh, taken up uh, the uh, net command. <laughs> well, that seems to work. That's good. So now it's time to actually go ahead and update Adobe Acrobat. So I am now installing uh, Acrobat. In fact, I have been. In fact, it's nearly done. Just going to install the 32-bit uh, version of uh, Apple QuickTime, because why not? It's going to be needed for all of those other really useful multimedia programs that I'm now going to be using because Windows 95 is fantastic. Right, excellent. That's good. It's, um, that's, uh, whoops, it's all up and running. All right, let's let's uh, see if we can actually launch it now. Yep, there we go. Now that we've got the 32-bit version, this will uh, launch perfectly fine. Absolutely fantastic. Now, some programs were actually, um, I think, forwardly designed with Windows 95 in mind. So we've got Microsoft Office on here. And as you can see, we can actually use the uh, context menu to create a new Microsoft Word 6.0 document. So, um, you know, we can give it a long file name. Um, and then it opens in Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word is obviously a 16-bit program, this version is. And um, it's truncated the file name. That's fine um so Arial 14 in fact you know what comic sense not on this version jings okay right wow 
what the hell is this one? You know what? Let's use it. Dear. Dar. I'd like to say at this point that you smell like an elephant, but, but I remembered I am not a 10 year old cartoon character helping to write a letter to my father's boss in 1991. Yours, most unsincerely, <laughs> Jay. <laughs> so there we are. We have a lovely letter to Boris Johnson. There we go. And obviously we can open that up and we can, uh, <laughs> we can print that. Oh, that's quite interesting. Still seems to be the 16-bit version. But there we go. <laughs> so, can we... Um, should also be able to um, actually you know what why don't we install some better video drivers as well <laughs> Because obviously this is a the original original Windows ninety five, yeah. I, I just I I find it insane because they don't they didn't make Windows ninety five OSR one or two available for general sale. They should have. I mean, it's it's like, I mean, is it was it really the case that if you if I'd have walked into a computer shop in let's be honest early nineteen ninety eight that I would have gotten this version of Windows 95. It's just madness, you know? It's seriously. There we 
go. English, direct draw. Your hardware settings have changed. You must restart your computer. Wasn't that nice? So obviously Windows 95 is installed, it's actually working okay, I've had a couple of hiccups, but for the most part it does actually seem to be working uh, quite well. And I'm going to be honest, I would still, I, I would honestly still suggest that um, uh, clean installing it is the better thing to do. But, um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the ATI graphics driver. Do you know what? Let's uh, let's see. If we can put it to a higher color uh, bit rate. Oh, <laughs> change the display type. So I can't actually do anything at the moment until I change my display type. <laughs> oh, mechdy me. Um, there we go. <laughs> I can actually... Um, there we go. So, yeah, on the original, original version of Windows 95... I believe you did actually have to restart. Um, you did actually have to restart unless you installed um, QRES, which came with the Windows 95 Power Toys, I believe. And there we go, we've got the um, the Petro looks better already. <laughs> so, there we have it. This is uh, the original Windows 95. Got the games, <laughs> audio software. Oh, bloody hell. Well, I suppose while I'm here, I could um, upgrade the um, sound driver. If you can believe it, the uh, card that predated Windows 3.1, uh, Windows 95, they've actually got some nice Windows 95 drivers for it. Oh, it tripped and fell over. I 
I also believe that in the original, original version of Windows 95, it didn't actually run ScanDisk. So I've had uh, older versions of Windows 95 that, that don't, when you shut down your com fail to shut down your computer properly, they don't actually run ScanDisk. Newer versions, of course, did. Obviously, Windows 95 OSR 2, uh, OSR 1, 2, and 2.5, where um, they were Windows, um, well, they were OEM only, but um, obviously there are ways in which you can actually force them to upgrade from Windows 3.1. Uh, I can do a video on that if, uh, if people so want. So, there you have it. So, I mean, obviously these drivers, I've used all the same install media. Um, I've used all the same install media that I used to install the drivers originally on Windows 3.1. They had uh, 95 drivers because the hardware was that new. Um... <laughs> I, I like how there's, there's still some hangers-on programs. <laughs> oh, jings. Microsoft antivirus, who remembers that? <laughs> and we even have the original <laughs> Microsoft backup. The, the DOS versions of these programs should also be there as well. Well, obviously, we have the newer version of Windows Backup. Oh, wow. James, what can I say? Oh, <laughs> did not detect a tape drive. Well, that's because there isn't one. <laughs> well, <clears throat> there you go. That's uh, Microsoft Windows 95. So, I hope you've all enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please feel free to subscribe. And please join me for my next video. Cheerio back.